Have you ever been to some kind of a jam and heard another guitar player playing an awesome blues lead or improvising something and you think, God, oh, I wish I could do that. And you go up and ask them like, hey, how are you doing that? Or can you explain that? And they say something like, oh man, I just play what I feel. That is the most frustrating answer you can give somebody. And I remember getting that answer when I was a kid and learning how to play. And I would I would ask people, you know, I was, in fact, you know, this is pre-internet. So a lot of what you learn is just going up and asking somebody to show you something. And I remember people saying, oh, I just play what I feel. I don't really know how to explain it. Well, that's a, the worst answer because it's just not true. I mean, well, you can play what you feel after you know two things. You need to know what your boundaries are. And, you know, you have to have some parameters, a scale, something. And then you also have to have uh, some musical ideas, which are, you know, like listening to music, inspiration. Without inspiration and some boundaries, you can't just play what you feel. It's impossible. And I remember just being frustrated because I felt like I, I didn't have that. Like I would try and play what I felt, but it wasn't, what if you don't feel anything? And so that's what we're going to be talking about, are those two topics, inspiration and boundaries. We'll be talking about that in this uh, video. And then I'll also give you some homework at the end of this. It's not bad homework. It's actually fun. Um, and it's really just designed to help you get to the point of playing what you feel. But just remember, it doesn't come without those those two things. So, so one of the topics then, the, the topic of boundaries, uh, I get a lot of questions, a lot of repeat questions from site members as they sign up. And it's a lot of times it's theory questions, you know, like, um, what do, do I need to know how to read sheet music or do I need to know how to memorize all the names of the notes or know how to count things off, what's a quarter note, what's an eighth note, all that stuff, more theory stuff. And I think the conventional way of teaching somebody to play would be to say, yes, you need to know all your theory first, and then we'll start playing. But I do it the opposite. I found that that's more effective, and you don't lose people by just giving them head knowledge. That head knowledge starts to fall away anyway. You might get it as you're learning it, kind of like learning a math formula, but now when you're on your own and you have to do it, it, you start to forget it. So I like to start with basic two plus two, you know, and it, so in other words, you start playing right away and then work theory in. And that's what I do every week at Active Melody. I do a new lesson and I just, I sneak theory into each lesson. So you could start with any of those. If you like the sound of it, start learning to play it. I'll show you how to play it and then I'll show you the, th the theory behind it. So we explain that. All right, so where do you start then? What is a good starting point when it comes to improvising? And that's what we're talking about. I should have said that. We're talking about improvising some kind of a lead. Typically when you're improvising, you're, pl you're playing on top of something else. Not all the time, but you, there's, there's a, uh, you know, a, a musical idea already there, some chords, and you're improvising a lead on top of that. And the lead could have chords in it, but th that's what we're talking about here. So what are my boundaries? Like, how do I start that? Well, I think the easiest and the best and the most effective way to start that is with the pentatonic scales, major and minor pentatonic. And I know that that's not proper in some way. Some people will say, no, you got to start with the, the, the major scale. And then, you know, you, you can work out the pentatonics out of that. But I think it's best to start with the pentatonics because they're easy shapes to picture on the, to visualize on the neck and they're easy to play, and there's only five notes, so you don't have all the variables that you'd have with some of the other scales. So I love the fact that they're five notes. The best part is that you can stay in the key of a song, and you can just stay in the major or minor pentatonic scale without having to worry about what chord you're on. That's the best part for me. I can keep playing the same lick over and over again, and it's gonna work over all the chords. And I think that's the one piece that a lot of people don't seem to understand. They worry too much about which note do I land on. And you'll get that over time. Your ear will dictate that. So I did a lesson on this very topic last Friday. That was EP380. And that would be an awesome starting point for those of you that want to know how to just play what you feel. Check out EP380. I have a link to that in on this page. Uh, and it was just the pentatonic scale in one position. But we've got the major and the minor pentatonic scale five notes in each, and you can play whatever you want with that. I'm telling you, you can really cover a lot of ground when you, once you learn how those five notes work. So once you know how to play the pentatonic scale, major and minor, then it's time to start listening to music and getting ideas. And that's the fun part. You don't even have to have a guitar with you. You can be in your car, you can be you know, laying in bed, you could be on a walk. However you listen to music, 
but just start listening to music and getting musical ideas. And obviously, if you want to learn to play jazz, you listen to jazz. That's where you get jazz phrasing and jazz ideas. If you want to listen to if you want to be more of a blues player, you listen to blues. And for me, there were three guys that summarized really everything I wanted to be able to do for Chicago-style blues, the electric blues lead stuff. And that, those were the three kings. And you hear people talk about them, Freddie, B.B., and Albert King. They did it all, and they all had their own kind of take on it. But what I liked about them, especially B.B. and Albert, was the fact that they had very simple and repetitive phrasing. More Albert than the other two, I should say. And I actually started with him because he was the easiest for me to be able to figure out. I started with a song called I'm Ready. It was, his, well, his version of the song I'm Ready. And I was able to play it. I was able to pick out maybe 40% of that first, that solo I was able to do on my own. Just And it took a while. I'm not saying I did it quickly. But it gave me some ideas, some inspiration, and then I, I already knew the boundary, so I knew what kind of scale he was working with then. It was just the pentatonics. But from there, I could then apply that, those few licks I learned from that one solo, I could apply that to something else. And I could start to play what I felt. Now, granted, most of what I felt was what Albert felt, because it was just copying him, but I didn't know any better. I'm like, you're like a toddler when you're starting to do this, and that's okay. It's okay to repeat their phrases. And then you realize, like all your heroes, they do that too. They're borrowing and stealing from Chuck Berry and Robert Johnson and everybody else. So start with the pentatonics. You can check out the link below to go to that particular lesson on how to do that. And then also listen to music. Listen to the style of music you want to be able to play. And once you got that under your belt, then you can close your eyes and you can start to play what you feel, what you hear in your head. Uh, you have to put something in your head by listening to music, but once you get that and you can start to do it, it's the most rewarding feeling you can get. Uh, you can get out of anything, or at least from me, I can't, I've yet to find anything that tops it. It's just incredible, and I know that's why you're watching this video. Is you want to know how to do that too? So your homework for this week is to listen to and play along with to jam over five blues songs. These are classic blues songs. Uh, and I have them listed below, so you can check that in the description. I've also got a Spotify playlist. And that makes it very easy. You can just click on that link and go right to my playlist. If you're not on Spotify, uh, you can join it. It's free. I think if you're a free Spotify member, I think you have to listen to ads in between songs or something. But anyway, that's an easy way to get to them. What's cool about these songs is that they're all played in the key of E, which is what the lesson was that I did on Friday, that lesson EP380. So you have the boundaries for playing in the key of E. Now you have five blue songs that are in the key of E. So you can take those two pieces and put them together and start playing what you feel and just jamming along with those songs. I want you to also try and pick up a lick or two as you listen to them. See if you can hear what somebody's doing. It doesn't even have to be a guitar part. It could be a piano part or something, but see if you can learn something new, even a small thing, just one little nugget out of five songs. There's probably something you can pick up. That's what this thing's all about, is just getting, you know, little wins. It's little wins that get you to the finish line.